But once upon a time, once upon a time, I was living overseas. That more than 50 years ago. No, not 50, not that old. More than 30. When I was young, I am the youngest in the family. So when I was young, I think my family spoiled me, or maybe I was, I don't want to use the word rebellious child. I don't know what's the softer word than rebellious child. I was an active child, a child that's full of energy. But according to my older brothers and sisters, because I was the youngest, I was troublemaker. But not by full meaning for trouble. I wasn't that bad. I didn't do anything that's extraordinary. So when I look back, I think, you know, I, I, I always think that I should have been better. But I don't want you to think that I was really, really bad. I was not. I was a borderline, maybe somewhere in the middle. And you know, in life, we always, I find we always go back to, you always go back to 10 years, from today, and you see how you have changed. Actually, I was really recently that we find ourselves always changing. As a matter of fact, I read recently that if you are doing today what you have done 10 years ago, exactly the same, whatever it is, you're doing something wrong. And I really see it on myself. 10 years ago, maybe I was a little more rigid on certain things. Right now, I'm more flexible. So when I read that saying, I said, yeah, that's me. Forty years ago, I was, you know, but I characterized myself as a, not rebellious, I don't like to, active, like, I like active. <laughs> I was active, hyper, hyper nice, hyper. So every 10 years, we really assess ourselves, and I'm going to bring it back to my favorite topic, which is the, uh, Cynthia calls it the hot dogs topic, I call it the food topic. <laughs> 10 years ago, also, I was eating things differently than what I am eating today. So that was my once upon a time story. So now once upon a time. You just pick up where he left off. I'm picking up where he left off. <laughs> which is that I was very interested in food. I particularly loved to go out to the sports stadium where I used to love to watch all of the athletes play and you know, I, I kind of was up in the stands myself doing what they were doing and imagining I'd be down there myself. And we always brought our own food with us and we'd sit there and we'd have these big sandwiches that my mother made and we'd have uh, iced tea that we brought with us. We would watch these games and all the, all the, the boys, because it was mostly boys, would be really excited and they'd be saying, oh, no, this team's going to win, oh, no, this other team's going to win. And because I was a little more rambunctious and I was with my older brothers and sisters, I would get into some trouble because I liked the sports, but sometimes it was a little boring. So I would turn around and I would run up and down those stairs. <laughs> I looked to see what might be behind this door and I looked to see, oh, what's that lady got to give her kids? And hmm, how about that? What's that boy playing with over there? And sometimes they'd turn around and they'd say, hey, we're missing somebody. And then somebody would have to stop watching the game, get up and start looking for me. And that always made them unhappy. And they'd say that I was ruining things for everybody. <laughs> and I was a troublemaker. It was very infuriating to them. I was having a good time. But the worst thing was, one time I ran all the way to the top of the stadium and I was watching the game and I saw this thing way across on the other side of the field and I said, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, years ago when I was a boy living in Arlington, Virginia, I was po quite possibly the biggest, most diehard Washington Redskins fan. And I grew up in the 80s when the Washington Redskins were one of the greatest teams in the NFL. 
And I remembered just hanging on every game and waking up in the morning and running to the newspaper, especially on Monday nights because I wasn't allowed to stay up late, to go see what the score of the game was. I had my Redskins sweat t-shirt and sweatshirt and I just love them. And this is back when they had the great great players like Riggins and Theismann and Art Monk and the Hogs and Dexter Manley. And when the Dallas came to town, everyone was going crazy. But over the years, even though I'm still a fan, my love of the team, my passion for the team has diminished. I can no longer say I'm the fan I once was after years, consecutive years, of the team losing and terrible ownership and just head scratching player moves. They just. Albert Hainsworth, but nothing else to say. So. I'm still a Washington Redskins fan. I still love the team. But if I miss a game or five games, it's not the end of the world anymore. Thank you very much.